All right, so this is take like a dozen because I keep screwing up. Uh, it's it's all for you guys. All right, let's take a look at um, Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law here for calculations. I can't talk worth anything tonight. So F E stands for electrostatic force. All right. Remember this little e is essentially record keeping. It's not actually going to do anything for us other than conceptually tell us, oh, this is a force due to electrostatics. We'll never insert a number here or do any multiplication or anything like that. K is a constant, so that always stays the same. By definition, constant is constant, right? Not changing. Uh, it will always be that number, and this unit is kind of a weird one. We don't have to worry about it too much, but just realize that the reason it's there is so that our force comes out in newtons. Because right, coulombs, those are in units of C, or sorry, charges are in units of C. Distance is units of meters. So what this unit does for me is it takes things that are in the denominator, my units are meters squared, and what it does is essentially gets it to cancel. Right? If I've got this unit on on k of newton meters squared in the numerator, well meters squared here is going to cancel with meters squared here. For my q's, they're both going to be in units of c for coulombs, so that's going to be c squared. Well, here it's in the denominator, here it's in the numerator, so that would cancel and it would leave me over with newtons, which is what force should be in. Now if that's over your head or too fast or whatnot, um, you're welcome to you know fast or rewind it a couple of times, but really it's not too big of a deal as long as we realize that k is always nine times ten to the ninth. You're in pretty good shape. You don't need to worry about this unit. In fact, you're never actually going to even use this unit because you'll never solve for k because it'll always be the same. So if you want, you can pretty much block that out as long as you know how to use the number. All right, so let's take a look at number one here. We got a negative charge of negative two point zero coulombs positive charge of 3 coulombs, they're separated by 80 meters. What's the force between the two charges? So here I am using K, because right? in previous problems, if you watch the previous videos or just remember what we did last class, we weren't really using the K, and that's because we were looking for hypothetical situations where it was like, well, if I double the charge or double the charge on, on one of my Q's and triple it on another and you know leave my dis distance the same or double that or cut in a quarter, whatever it was, um, we had to do these like little before after scenarios in order to see well, what happens if I if I do increase a charge or decrease a charge or distance or whatnot. Um, but we weren't looking for something specific. And the uh, the better reason is when we end up going to try to figure out how much a force increased by, how many times it increased by, we're going to have to do division from our before to after scenarios or vice versa. Well, in doing so. K would be in both of those. Well, K doesn't change, so it would always be 9.0 times 10 to the 9th divided by 9.0 times 10 to the 9th. Well, anything by, divided by itself is 1. So then when we go to multiply this by what the rest of the relationship was, it would always be 1 times something. 1 times anything is whatever that value was other than 1. So we didn't need to use K there. Now if that's confusing and you're like, well, how do I know when to use it and when not to use it? If you don't get the whole hypothetical situation versus an exact situation, always use K. You'll never go wrong. The only difference is you, you know, you'll end up having to throw in one extra scientific notation integer into your calculator, which can um, can introduce some room for error. But if you're careful, it's not a big deal. So use it every time, if in doubt. All right, on this page, we'll definitely have to use it every time because it's asking us for not something hypothetical. It's what is. What is the exact force between two objects? Um, so we have to use K because we are looking for the force. In this case, we need K there because otherwise we're not going to get newtons anywhere in here, and force is always in newtons. All right, so K, 9 times 10 to the ninth. One charge is going to be 3 coulombs. Our second charge is going to be negative 2 coulombs. Our distance is... 80 meters, and we square that as part of the formula. And I would recommend pretty much doing this as one problem. So it would be pretty much 9 times 10 to the 9th times negative 6. Right? And then I would do this as a second problem, 80 squared, so 6,400, and then divide the two to get this final answer. 
Um, that's not to say you, you can't do everything all as one big problem. But you just have to be really careful about that if you do. And you'd have to wrap this in parentheses, then click division in your calculator, and then wrap this in parentheses. If you don't do that, then your calculator uh, doesn't really know what to do with the order of operations so well, and uh, you get some pretty funky results. All right, so a lot of students had questions in years past, and in this year too, about this. You guys are thinking really great mathematically at this point in the year, which is which is so cool. So a lot of students are like, well, negative. 8 million something? I mean, that's a that's a really big force, isn't it? And we're only dealing with 2 and 3 up here, and on top of it, it's separated by 80 meters, so you mean to tell me it's this big? Yes, because a Coulomb charge is actually something that's it's very big. It's like 6 quintillion. I mean, that's a really, really big amount in one Coulomb, so we're dealing with 2 Coulombs, we're dealing like you know, with 12 quintillion. Uh, we're dealing with 3 coulombs we're dealing with 18 quintillion electrons that's a huge amount so that's why we end up with a, a really large force here even though we're many meters away um, so just realize that yes we we normally will not end up with something this big because a lot of times these charges are really small but in this case they're pretty big a full integer when i talk about really small i mean it'll be you know negative something times 10 to the negative 18th or negative 19th or negative 5th maybe but it will never be a 3 or negative 2 all right so just keep that in mind all right um number two negative charge of negative 0 0.0005 coulombs you could also write that as negative 5 times 10 to the negative 1 2 3 fourth all right it's an attractive force of 9 newtons on a second charge that is 10 meters away. What's the charge magnitude of the second charge? So charge magnitude is just a fancy way of saying what's the second charge, right? What's the, what's the number size of that second charge? Well, first of all, we know which equation we're using because um, we're looking for force of an electrostatic charge or electrostatic attraction or repulsion. We do know that this is an attractive force. So attractive force is where we get that negative from. Anytime we're dealing with Coulomb's law type problem, a force that is negative, it's not actually that it's a negative force, it's as an attractive force. So if we go back to the previous problem, this negative in front doesn't mean that it's negative, you know, 8 million. It, it means that it's an attractive force of 8 million, new, uh, 8 million newtons. So in this problem, we know an attractive force is gonna be negative. We know the force. We know k, right? That's never going to change. 9 times 10 to the 9th. It's not showing up so great, but 9 times 10 to the 9th. We know that one of the charges is negative 0 0.0005. The second charge we're not sure of, and we know that our distance is 10 meters away. So that's where this 10 is coming from. So again, I'd recommend throwing this into the calculator. And you may even want to store this in your calculator as a variable if you haven't. Um, and I can I can show you how to how to do that in class one-on-one -on -one if you want, or Google how to how to store a variable in a you know TI whatever model calculator that you have. It does make your life a little bit easier. But I would throw that top part in your calculator, and you come out with um, a negative 4.5 million for this for this top part here. I'm just going to write it as negative four five, and then follow it up with five zeros so negative 4.5 million and then the bottom part we end up with 10 squared and right, so that's a hundred and then I realize I've still got this Q here so we still end up with a Q there and then I have negative 9 over here so at first it may seem like what the heck am I doing here but you could use cross multiplication at this point to solve for Q, and you would end up with a Q2, uh, or whichever Q, it doesn't matter if it's Q1 or Q2, uh, just Q, uh, equals 2 times 10 to the negative 4th coulombs, or it would be the same thing as 0 0.0002 coulombs. Now notice, with the charges here, um, our initial charge that it gave us was negative. We 
know that this is an attractive force, so even if we didn't catch that this was negative because of the attractive force, we'd be able to the second charge should come out to be positive. But my first charge is negative, my second charge has to be positive because remember likes repel, opposites attract. So we want opposite signs for this charge and this charge. In this case, we have an opposite charge, so we pretty good, good to go. Now if you wanted to, you could take this, plug it back into the formula, do everything, multiply it all out, divide it by 10 squared, which is 100. You should come out to something that's pretty darn close to negative 9. The reason I say close and not exact is because when we're dealing with these really big numbers or really small numbers in scientific notation, you're, you've got a lot of different um, ways to round, a lot of room for error in your rounding. So if we came up with you know, negative 8.95, well, that's that's close enough. If we came out with negative nine equals, you know, negative nine point oh two, again, close enough. If we came out with negative nine equals, you know, like eighteen million. It's like, well, that's that's way far off. We've got we've got something that we got to go back and check. All right. Let's take a look at number uh, number three here. Very similar in terms of what we're what we're doing. We're still using Coulomb's law formula. I've got two negative charges. Both of them are negative 3 coulombs, so negative 3 there, negative 3 there. They push each other apart with a force of 19.2. So push each other apart, we know that this is going to be a positive force. Because remember, negative forces attract. Um, it's not really that it's a negative force, but a negative F means that I've got a force of attraction. Positive F means that I've they're going to repel because they're both negative anyway. And likes repel, opposites attract. So we know that our force is positive, 19.2, again, because it's um, pushing. How far apart are the two charges? So I'm solving for D in this case. And so I go ahead and multiply all that out, 9 times 10 to the 9th times negative 3 times negative 3, or you could leave it as negative 3 squared. Um, and then I go ahead and figure out the rest from there. So this is a pretty good way to do cross multiplication 19.2 and 19.2 over 1 it's the same thing doesn't change anything mathematically but conceptually it might help me out a little bit um, in going to look at what my cross multiplication actually ends up being so then I would end up with d squared d squared equals negative 4.22 times 10 to the ninth but we know that, that uh, that's not what we're not what we're looking for we're looking for d not d squared so I have to take the square root of d squared to get d by itself if I do that to one side, do it to the other, 4,951 point something. So you could route it off 64,952 meters in the end. And again, take that, plug it back in for D, square it, do everything along the top, divide by two, uh, the, the two answers, and you end up with, or two sub-answers, you should end up somewhere near 19.2. Alright, number four. A negative charge of that, right? Negative four times ten to the negative fifth coulombs. A positive charge of seven times ten to the negative fifth coulombs are separated by 0.15 meters. What's the force between the two objects? In this case, we should come out with a much smaller force than number one because we're dealing with something that's much smaller in terms of how many coulombs we have for each one of those charges. So many, many less electrons that we're dealing with, and um, our distance is also a little bit smaller as our distance decreases, we should see that our force increases, but it's compensated for by these charges here in relation to problem one. Alright, so this problem just as is by itself, I've got one of my charges for Q, I've got another charge for Q right here. They're separated by 0.15 meters, so 0.15 meters here. The squared is part of the problem, or part of the, not part of the problem, sorry, part of the formula. So go ahead and multiply these three out, come up with a sub-answer, do 0.15 squared, come up with a sub-answer, divide the two, and you'll come out with negative 1,120 newtons. And that should make sense because one of my charges is positive, or sorry, negative, one of my charges is positive, this would be a positive here, and negatives and positives, opposites, attract. So it makes sense that force. Remember, anytime I get a negative for force, that actually doesn't mean that it's a negative force, but it means that it's a force of attraction. 
All right. Uh, number five. A negative charge of negative 8 times 10 to the negative 6 exerts an attractive force. So attractive force of 12 newtons, that means it's going to be negative. On a second charge, that is 0 0.05 meters away. What's the magnitude of the second charge? Well, I know that it's an attractive force of 12, so negative 12. This is constant, that's my k. Right? k is always 9 times 10 to the 9th. I know my first charge. That's where I'm getting that from. Uh, I don't know magnitude of the second charge. That's why I'm leaving that as Q. And then 0 0.05 squared for my distance. And then like previous problems, it's probably best to just say, oh, well, let's look at this as cross multiplication. Because negative 12 and negative 12 divided by 1 does not change anything mathematically, but it does help me concept, uh, concept wise. So go ahead and figure out what your answer is here. Cross multiply. Uh, divide and you end up with q squared equals 4.17 times 10 to the negative seventh. All right, last one on this page, two negative charges that are both negative five times 10 to the negative fifth. So, because they're, they're both this, that's why I'm using the number twice. I'll never generalize unless it's a scenario where they're, they're both specifically that. Uh, they push each other apart makes sense if they're both negative that they would push each other apart um, with a force of 15 newtons I know that this force is going to be positive because it's repulsion right pushing so it's positive 15 uh, how far apart are the two charges again this is probably a pretty decent cross multiplication type problem figure out what all this is multiply by 1 divide by 15 you end up with um, 1.5. D squared equals 1.5. We don't want D squared. We want D. So I end up taking the square root of D squared to get D by itself. Take the square root of 1.5. Uh, because we did it to one side, we got to do it to the other. And I end up with D equals 1.22 meters. All right. Till next time.